In the previous lecture, we talked about how organic compounds were composed of carbon and hydrogen, or hydrocarbons, and then functional groups were added to those. In addition to that, though, the macromolecules that we are going to be talking about, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, are composed of building blocks called monomers. And these monomers are small compounds that you need to be able to recognize, and then they are put together into these larger uh, chains called polymers. So mono for one and poly for many. So the way that monomers are assembled into polymers has a name. It's called a condensation reaction or a dehydration synthesis reaction. And the names make sense. Condensation has to do with water and dehydration has to do with water. And synthesis has to do with making something. So the way I wrote this here, I put XH and XOH make XX plus water. So I'm going to redraw it a little bit. So what, what I'm really saying here is this. You have some molecule X, and it has a hydrogen on it, a hydrogen sticking off. And you have a second molecule, X, and it has an OH, a hydroxide group, sticking off. And what happens in a condensation reaction is that the H and the OH, they get together and they form water, which leaves. And then in the spot where the H and the OH were, this becomes the bond that holds these two monomers together, making a dimer, or in a long chain, a polymer. And the opposite of this reaction is called a hydrolysis reaction. And hydro literally means water, and lysis means to break. So a hydrolysis reaction would break a molecule uh, apart with the addition of water. And both of these are happening in your body right now. Your cells may be doing condensation reactions to build something. You're building hormones, you're building enzymes, you're building storage molecules. And hydrolysis, sometimes your body needs to break down old things. Or digestion is a good example of hydrolysis, where you're digesting your proteins into amino acids. You're just digesting starch into simple sugars. So that's a condensation and a hydrolysis reaction. Here's a simplified picture. So here's condensation. Notice how you have this chain, and this has an H, and this has an OH, and this leaves as water, and now those are hooked together in the spot where, the, uh, where they were, an H and an OH. And here's the opposite, hydrolysis. And so this is breaking off by the addition of a molecule of water, an H attaches to one thing, and an OH attaches to the other. Now you could also be asked to locate where a condensation reaction was happening, or where two things might hook together, or where they might break apart. So I wanted to show you a couple of pictures that were more complicated. So this is showing a condensation reaction, or a dehydration synthesis is the wording they have here. So this is two monosaccharides, which right now you would not recognize, we haven't talked about them yet. And here's what's going to happen. So an H and an OH are going to leave. This is our condensation reaction, same reaction. So don't let these the different pictures you know, scare you. Um, in this case, notice how an oxygen gets left behind. And so the oxygen is what ends up hooking these together. Keep in mind also, you're not going to have to draw these. But you should be able to recognize them. If you were asked where would the condensation reaction happen, or circle what would leave, you should circle an H and an OH. Uh, showing it would form water. And then the hydrolysis, remember lysis to break by adding water, would just be going the other direction. So this is showing two monosaccharides forming a disaccharide, two simple sugars forming a more complex sugar. Here's another picture. So this is showing two amino acids. So these are the building blocks of protein. Now again, don't let the, the rest of the molecules scare you. So you have a carbon, double bonded oxygen. This is a carboxyl, a carboxyl group. And over here you have an amino group. But here's the important part. All I really want you to focus on here. You have an H and an OH. Those are going to leave. And where they were located, that's going to form the bond. It happens to be called a peptide bond. But here's your original amino acids. And now... They're, they're hooked together in this spot, and they could get broken down by going the other direction. That would be hydrolysis. And this third one is even scarier looking. So this is showing a fatty acid, 
has a carboxyl at the end, carboxylic acid, and it's actually going to hook to this other molecule, which happens to be called glycerol. But again, despite the fact that this is a much more complicated picture, if you look, just look at what's in blue, the H and the OH leave as water, and right here, where they were located before, this is where the connection is. Here's the carbon double bonded to oxygen, and this is actually an ester, which was one of the functional groups we talked about. And if this happens three times, which is what they're showing here, this is now a triglyceride, which we're going to talk about later in the week. But again, notice how these pictures are much more complicated, but the reaction is the same one. It's still water being lost to hook two things together. If I go back here, water is lost to hook two things together. And this last one, water is lost to hook two things together. Every single case, it's really the same thing over and over again. So that um, is called a condensation reaction or a dehydration synthesis. And then the opposite is your, um, is your hydrolysis that breaks them apart. So the last thing we're going to talk about today um, is isomers. So an isomer, by definition, is where you have an organic compound with the same formula, but a different structural arrangement. And a good example that I could give you of this is, suppose I gave everybody in the class 10 Legos, 10 identical Legos, and I said build something. Every person might build something slightly different. Now there's certain rules, like in this example below, these all have the same formula. These are all C5H12. But if we look at their arrangement three-dimensionally, if I was to build these, so this one has just a straight chain. Here's our, our hyd hydrogens would be coming off of it like this, if I drew them all out, an H and an H. Because remember, carbons would form your backbone, and then the hydrogens, every carbon makes four bonds. So this was what this one would look like. This one has three H's here, but this one has sort of a branch coming off of it. So now this would have three H's here, and this would have an H and then H and H, and then our H is here. Bottom line, this one has a branch. And this last one branches in four directions. So each of these would have H, 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 if we draw these out. What's my point? My point is, because these three physically look different, just like if everybody had 10 Legos, they might build something different, their properties are different. In this case, notice how it changes the melting point. This one has a melting point of negative 130 degrees Celsius, this one has a melting point of negative 16 degrees Celsius. So you could solidify this one um, in a classroom if you could get the, the temperature just below zero uh, using a little dry ice or something. You wouldn't be able to necessarily solidify this one. So their properties are different. In us, that can be a huge deal. In other words, isomers, different structural arrangements, can cause different reactions in your body. And uh, one example of this is the difference between starch and cellulose. So starch and cellulose are actually isomers of sugar. They're all made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, same numbers of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in these big, long chains. But your body can digest starch. That's potatoes, pasta, all those things. Your body cannot digest cellulose. If you eat four grams of starch, that's one calorie of starch you've eaten. I'm sorry, one gram of starch, four calories of starch. One gram is four calories. Um, if you eat one gram of cellulose, you've basically ingested one gram of fiber that's going to pass through your body and help you go to the bathroom because you don't have enzymes in your body to break down cellulose. Even though it has the same chemical formula as starch, the way it's arranged, your body can't break it down. And this is how they can make, for example, artificial sweeteners and things like that. They can arrange them differently so that they'll behave differently. But this can become a problem too. For example, um, fatty acids. You've probably heard of trans fats. Trans fats are just an isomer of other fatty acids. But that particular isomer can cause all kinds of heart disease and, and clog your arteries and whatever. So trans fats are really just an isomer that's bad for you. And here's another example. In pharmacology medicine, um, so this thalidomide is a drug that was given in the 50s um, for morning sickness. So people that had a lot of morning sickness, women, pregnant women, in their first trimester would take thalidomide, and it relieved the nausea, it made them sleepy, it made them feel better, basically. What they didn't realize is that thalidomide had an isomer, and that isomer, it was like a mirror image, that's what they're trying to show here. Sort of like your, how your left shoe doesn't fit your right foot. Like, they're very similar, but they're not the same. Well, it turns out that this isomer of thalidomide 
cause birth defects. And there were over 5,000 children born in the 50s, and I believe it was the late 50s, early 60s, um, with this same birth defect, the, the short arms. And it came about all because of this isomer that people didn't know about. So they prescribed a drug, not realizing that a particular isomer of the drug, same formula but a different arrangement, caused birth defects. And um, in fact, in the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire, there's a line, he mentions children of thalidomide. And this is the event that he's referring to. And thalidomide is still used today. It's just not used for morning sickness. Um, it's used for treating certain kinds of cancers, and it has some, some other uses. Um, but that's why certain drugs, you can't take them while you're pregnant. It's because the drug might not affect you, but it might affect the developing baby. Or that the drug itself, this, has a, a positive effect. And this on you maybe has no effect at all, but on a developing baby does. You know, or this has a negative effect and they don't realize it and a drug gets pulled from the market because of a side effect that they didn't realize because of an isomer. So tomorrow we're going to start talking about the different macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Um, at this point we've covered all of the introductory material.